Hello there again, YouTube world. Um, this is Tony Grill Grillo, and I'm uh, um, right now I'm parked at a truck stop in Rochester, Minnesota. I'm just about getting ready to leave, and uh, I'd do a quick video. I was going to show you a map here. Um, I told you that I spent um, a good chunk of my life uh, uh, living in Wisconsin, uh, and the area that I'd settled in was uh, kind of by uh, between Madison and Milwaukee. I thought I'd try to show it to you on a map. Uh, and so it's it was uh, called the Watertown area. And it was like, here's where Beaver Dam is. It's pretty close to Beaver Dam. And you can see Green Bay is like way up here. Or there's Fond du Lac. And then Green Bay is like way up there. So... Um, but the nice thing about this area is that it's uh, it's kind of like close to everybody. Um, you know, you're only like 30 miles from Madison. You're about maybe an hour from from Milwaukee. You're about maybe two hours from Green Bay, and uh, you're also an hour away from the Wisconsin Dells. I'm about uh, uh, two and a half hours from Chicago, and um, about six hours from Minneapolis but I'll zoom in here a little bit and there's Columbus and um, and then if I zoom in a little more okay off 151 that's Columbus Wisconsin and then we go over here and you'll see here's a little town of Reeseville there's a little town of Lowell and there's a little town of Kleiman and those are the three towns that I lived in where um, just just uh, the nicest bunch of people uh, I served uh, on the volunteer with two different fire departments there and, and basically worked with the, all three of them and I gotta tell you that uh, 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 they are great people um, just uh, I had wonderful experiences with with uh, uh, and wonderful stories that unfortunately I, I can't share because I've been sworn to secrecy. Uh, when you're on a volunteer fire department, you can't tell any of your stories. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, I wish I could tell those stories. But uh, um, and Juno is right up there, and um, I know there was a some kind of poll was out there saying uh, that Lowell and Reeseville. Uh, where the uh, they're kind of like the twin cities, like Minneapolis, St. Paul. They just they're so close to each other. Everybody just says Lowell, Reeseville. Like like when somebody says, "Hey, where who, where are you from?" You know, they just kind of say both names. Um, very small communities, climbing to, as well. I think climbing has a population of like 300 people. Uh, Lowell is uh, I think uh, I don't know if Lowell's bigger or not. And Reeseville, I. I think is somewhere in the same neighborhood, you know. So very, very tiny communities, but everybody there is friendly. You got Amish people that live in that community, so a lot of times you'll see, you know, the Amish uh, out there with their horses on carts. And um, uh, we have uh, a BP gas station in Reeseville. Uh, that's Sam's BP, and uh, he's a great guy. Um, and he employs, uh, uh, well, there's, t there's two brothers that work there that they've been there forever. Uh, and I love those guys, very young guys. Uh, one is grow grows a really awesome beard, and the other one, uh, he, I don't think he has a beard. Um, but anyways, um, <clears throat> Reeseville Lowell was ranked as the most friendliest town uh, in all of Wisconsin. As as far and also another fun thing about Reeseville is there was a movie that was made here, um, kind of like a grade B movie. But uh, and the title of the movie is actually Reeseville, if you can believe that. Um, and what's kind of funny about that is if you look at the the way Reeseville is spelled, R E E S E. V I L, you see the word evil within Reeseville, and then there's L E, and that's why uh, the people that made the movie, uh, that's why they chose uh, to just call it Reeseville. I guess the guy was originally from Wisconsin, 
and then he moved to New York and he uh, he made this film and uh, it's actually the biggest name star in the film is Mark Hamill yeah the guy that starred as Luke Skywalker in Star Wars uh, he stars he's the coroner in the film and he's kind of an interesting coroner he uh, you know he he uh, uh, basically there's these murders that are going around in 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 this little town and uh, and it's one of those movies where everybody is a suspect and 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 there's bizarre things going on kind of like Twin Peaks and uh, and these mur murders that are very gruesome uh, like there's a scene where there's a dead body that's like uh, uh, it's like it's like attached to um, somebody's living room, and uh, and it's done in a very gruesome way. <laughs> in fact, it was it was so gruesome they, they were they were renting somebody's house uh, during the the movie. They were there for like I don't know a couple months filming, but they had to you know the, the people that were there uh, um, asked that that body be covered up. It was so because it was so realistic looking and so so gruesome looking. Um, they didn't even want to look at the body when they came into the house. <laughs> they, they asked to, so they had to cover it up every time they weren't filming. Um, so anyways, uh, I thought I'd share a story because, um, the next story I, I was going to share involved a lady that I met in Columbus. And we actually had the, right here in this little town, and we had... A, um, uh, a first time date and uh, and so I will I'm gonna pause this first so I had um, taken this lady um, that I met and I can't really say her name but uh, we, we went to the McKenzie Environmental Center in Poinette, Wisconsin and during that time period, uh, they actually housed wolves, as you could see right here. So you could you could walk around the environment center, and you could, you know, um, see these wolves here. If I can get the videos to work, yeah, here we go. Okay, so that's one of the wolves. And so yeah, they had wolves there, you know. It was pretty neat seeing them. I used to like going there all all the time. Just uh, beautiful, beautiful animals. Uh, they are so large too. Well, so much larger than dogs. Um, but uh, they don't have them there anymore. This is where we went on our first date, and I will tell you the story about that. I gotta put it on pause. So this was the post I wrote about that date. Um, and uh, it says Tony Grillo, July 22nd, 2020. That's not when the date happened, but um, this is uh, me telling the story. Happy Wednesday to all my beautiful friends in Facebook land. Most of you all know I jumped on Facebook like one year after my divorce, and that was like six years ago. Well, now it's, I think it's more like eight or nine or ten. And I have to tell you that it was all of you that got me through. I've met so many wonderful friends here on Facebook, and I love you all. And, and that is true. Um, you know, especially when you're depressed and you're sad and you're angry, and then you see all your friends, and, and they just make you smile, you know, on Facebook. Hopefully, those that I made angry will forgive me when I was being a jackass, which was a lot of times. Well, we all have our good and bad days, and that sometimes comes across on my Facebook. I've shared stories with you all. I've talked about dating and even slap pics of everything I've done, and somewhere after getting my ass knocked down, I began to live again. My ex-wife said I'd thank her someday for the divorce. I sure didn't feel thankful at the time. My divorce was finalized in court on, of all days, my birthday. When it was done, the last thing my lady attorney said to me was, Happy Birthday, and, and that is actually really true. <laughs> that did happen. 
uh, you know, but that's just my life. And during my journey, I found my smile again, and my heart learned to love again. I have faced rejection thousands of times, but I never got down. I just knew it wasn't meant to be, and I have so much love in my heart to offer, it's waiting to explode, and I figure someday I'll make her feel lucky to have found me, and vice versa. I'm still trying to figure that one out. Um, even years after I've written this post. <laughs> but, you know, what it is, you just gotta keep plugging on. You know, like I was said in the other video, the Rocky movie, you just, you, you, you keep getting back up. And you keep fighting, and that's, that's how you win, right? So, here's another one and out story that happened almost five years ago. I am still Facebook friends with her and adore our friendship. I will nickname her Wolf Girl because we went to a coffee shop and then we went hiking at a state-run nature preserve that had some live wolves there behind a fenced area. When the wolves saw my date, they immediately howled at her and that's why I gave her the nickname Wolf Girl. Um, and I can't use her name because we have a lot of mutual Facebook friends and at the time that we went on our first date, we, we really didn't want everybody to know that we were on a date together. <laughs> so we, we never did take any pictures uh, uh, because, yeah, we just, you know, the towns are so small. We just felt like we, we didn't want people to know, you know, we didn't want to, nobody needed to, to know what we were doing, you know, or that we were together. So, but here's how it went. Um, so I didn't hear from her after our first date. And then a week later, she posts these pics with her and this very handsome man. And I've always been happy for those that meet that one. Heck, I've had three relationship breakups where everyone I had been with for a while met their husbands immediately after we broke up. And I've never gotten down about that. Yeah, I wrote a post about that too, uh, and somebody referred me to the uh, movie What's Up Chuck um, and I never heard of that movie before but that's I guess that's a movie about a guy who you know he goes every girl he dates uh, immediately afterwards they find their husband and and uh, that that's me uh, it's happened uh, you know three times uh, with three different ladies and now I just recently me and Dee broke up so I'm sure it's going to happen to her too um, the next guy she meets, uh, now that she moved back to Tennessee, uh, the next guy that she meets is the one she's going to marry. So Wolf Girl met a terrific guy. If I'm going to lose out, it might as well be to someone fantastic. A few days later, the guy disappears. Wolf Girl doesn't have him anywhere. So I message her. And she tells me that her guy was in fact homeless. He lived out of his car owed back child support to three different baby mamas. He didn't have a job and wanted to move in with her and control her life. I was in total shock and I said, are you telling me I lost out to a homeless guy? She apologized, but I'm like, that's freaking hilarious. <laughs> I did. I, I, I just started laughing about that. And we still joke about that guy, about that to this day, not about the guy, but about that, what had happened, you know. And we have still remained great friends. And, and last I checked, Wolf Girl is dating someone nice right now, and he's not homeless. And mind you, I lived in my semi truck for five months and spent several holidays homeless, so I know what it's like. You know, even had to shower at the YMCA. It sucks being homeless. And so I'm not laughing at the homeless. You know, it just was kind of a, a funny story. And yeah, I was homeless, so I, I know, you know. But last weekend, I did have the most wonderful first date with uh, uh, the most wonderful, funny, badass, awesome girl I've ever met. I hope, sure hope I get a second date. We shall see. So, for all of you playing the dating game like, like me, never get down on yourself about those failures. You single <coughs> people all have to travel. Us, us single people, I'm sorry, all have to travel this difficult road. We all hit dead ends. But eventually, we will see that omen of a fantastic sky in front of our highway and that means someone more awesome is coming our way yeah i actually wrote a post about that while i was traveling out to minnesota there was a girl that i dated for about um 
three months, and she was, she was, oh my god, she was a great girl, but that one didn't work out either, and someday I'll tell that story. There's a quote I like, love is the greatest mystery of all. If you can analyze it and predict it, then it would lose all its power. Happy hump day. Love you all. So that was that post. That was that story about Wolf Girl. And uh, I hope you all enjoyed it. And I hope you all have a great day. And give me a like. Give me a subscription. Get her done. And I appreciate all of you. And um, I'm out of here. Take care. Bye.